Okay, at the beginning of this project, what I want to do is kind of give you some information to help you decide if you want to cast these pieces in dental stone or if you want to cast them in plastic. Now, what I'm going to be mentioning prices and things for are, first of all, the molds you need one of each, and these are about $34 each, okay, as far as the cost goes. For the six-player game, you're going to need 12 castings of each mold. So the materials that I'm going to mention here are for 12 castings of each mold. What I've got here is on the right, I've got the, or on your left, uh, I've got the dental stone, and on the other side here, I've got pieces cast in plastic. Now, before you judge too much, the dental stone ones are not painted. So they're going to look a little plain and light in the video. Don't let that distract you. They will look just as good as the plastic ones once they're painted. But I do want to give you a couple of differences between these two so you can decide what kind of material you want to cast these pieces out of. Now to start with, uh, I want to cover the handling uh, of these pieces. So this is cast in dental stone. So uh, this isn't a whole set, this is just a few of them, but I want you to kind of listen to this. Okay. It's like dumping a box of rocks on your table, okay? So that's what dental stone is. Basically, it's stone. So if you intend to cast it out of dental stone, you might want to put a towel or you might want to put a tablecloth or something down. For one thing, it'll protect your table. The other one, it'll kind of protect the pieces from getting chipped. And they will get chipped. Because the nature of this game is to dig around and find the pieces you want. So, where is that tea piece? Where is that bridge? I, I need that four point bridge. Where is that bridge? You know, people are going to be doing that constantly for this. So they are going to get chipped and dinged, but they're usually pretty small. So anyway, that's what the uh, uh, dental stone pieces kind of sound like on the table. Let's just get those to the side. Here are some plastic pieces. Now they they kind of do that to your table a little bit too, but not as bad. I mean, there's a lot of plastic here, but when you're digging around and you're trying to find the pieces you want, these don't chip. They don't chip at all, okay? And the uh, paint seems to hold up really well on them. So most people are going to tend to want to go and cast them in plastic. But before you decide, let me cover a couple other things about the materials. So. Let's just put this aside. Back to dental stone. As far as cost for a six player set, six player set means you need 24 castings of each mold. You're going to spend about 36 to 40 dollars in casting material. So a 25 pound box will do just fine to cast all you need for a six player game. So you know 40 bucks that's not too bad on materials. Plastic on the other hand is going to cost you around $200 for the plastic. And you can say, $200? Are you kidding? Why is it that expensive? Well, one reason it's expensive is because the plastic itself, the gallon kit, is about $100. But a plastic gallon kit is not quite enough because, you know, this is a full set right here. So this actually takes a gallon plus a little bit. It actually takes 144 ounces. So it's a little bit more than a gallon material. So you need to buy a gallon and an additional quart. And you need some mold release. And you need some colorant. So when you throw those materials together, you tend to have the higher cost of the plastic. But it will last pretty much indefinitely and they won't chip. They're probably about the same as far as difficulty in casting. Uh, as far as the dental stone goes, it's a little easier to clean up. Uh, you can take your time when you cast, you're pouring it in. The problem is, is you have to knock out those air bubbles. You have to smack the bottom of whatever work surface or vibrating table or somehow get those air bubbles to come to the surface in order to get good casting. On the plastic side of it, uh, you get perfect castings and you don't even have to work at it. Uh, you just pour the liquid plastic in. It's, it's about as thin as water, but uh, the, castics, the castings will come out uh, perfect pretty much every time. The problem is that you got three minutes. So, you know, you're under the clock when you're doing this. So it's going to take a little bit, you know, it's going to take a, uh, one or two castings before you really get the hang of it. 
Uh, the other thing is if you spill liquid plastic somewhere, it's just a lot harder to clean up. I'm not exactly sure how you clean it up. I mean, if it's pre-mixed, you wait for it to harden and you can kind of chip it up. But otherwise, you got to wipe it up with a paper towel. So that's really kind of the difference between the casting. Plastic is a little messier. You're in more of a hurry. But you get perfect castings. This one you can take your time. Uh, it's not as uh, not as messy, but you got to work to get those uh, air bubbles out of the uh, out of the mold so you get your perfect castings. So let me cover a couple of other things when you're comparing these two. One of them is about the stacking of the blocks. Now, for some reason, I have found when I'm stacking up blocks made of dental stone. There's something kind of nice about it. I mean, you're actually stacking up stone so that when you actually get pieces that, that go on top of each other and you're stacking them together, they actually stay in place. They put where you set them. I mean, they stay in place where you set them and they don't shove around. It's kind of a really nice material that way. Uh, on plastic pieces, once you put the plastic down, you will find that as you put plastic pieces together, sometimes they're going to slide around a little bit. You know, if you put something on top of here, you nudge it, you nudge it, you nudge it, it, it kind of it pushes around a little bit. Uh, so it, it tends to want to be a little slippery, slide around on it. But if you put something of dental stone on top, it's set. It don't go anywhere. And the dental stone is a little heavier, not a lot heavier just a little heavier. It just got that kind of a nice feel to it. But, once again, these pieces will chip. So, you do need to have a tablecloth or something else down here. Now, the next thing you want to compare is probably when you have to glue these pieces together. My preference is, I think it's much easier to glue dental stone together. Now, the Aline's Tacky Glue in the gold bottle that I use, you do have to wait for it to dry. So as you're putting pieces together and you sit there, okay, we'll set that aside, we'll work on the next piece, five minutes later that one will be set up. If you're using it with the plastic, I use super glue or super glue gel to be exact, and these pieces stick together instantly, most of the time. Half the time they stick to your fingers. Uh, so. I thought it was a little more troublesome to glue plastic together because you've got to make sure that you've got good contact between the pieces and then sometimes you have to spray it with zip kicker or an accelerator to get it to harden up right away. And then you can't use the glue near where you spray the accelerator because it hardens immediately when you put it on the piece because the accelerator is floating in the air at that, you know. So there are some things about gluing in plastic that are a little more difficult to deal with, but I have found with super glue, these things, you can't break them. I mean, you can twist on it, they're not coming apart. So, that's the difference on gluing. Now, as far as painting is concerned, since I did this plastic and I colored the plastic dark before I painted it, all I had to do for painting was a light dry brush, and it was it. You're done. Painting is kind of a lot easier as long as you color the plastic dark first. These you have to put a base coat on, paint sticks to it easier, but you do have to put a, a, a thin coat of the dark color and jam that brush into all the cracks and all the details. So painting is probably three times, four times as long of a job because of the base coat as it is with these. And you might think, well, why don't I just spray paint, I could just spray paint a base coat. You know, that would be quick. Um, no, you can't really spray paint because of the nature of the city buildings. If you tried to spray paint these, you're not getting the spray paint down in the cracks. You're not getting them between the buildings. You're not getting it down into the windows. It just won't go there because it, there's too many narrow places. So you have to have a watered down solution of dark and jam that brush into there to do the base coat. But if you color the plastic solid first, all you have to do is dry brush this one. Plastic will deteriorate the molds after a while. Dental stone will not. So, you know, you paid 34 bucks each for these plus shipping. Uh, then you can get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of castings out of this with dental stone. It'll never hurt the molds. These, with mold release, you're going to get around 50 castings or so. You'll get plenty to do what you want, but it does deteriorate the molds after a while. So, plus and minuses on both sides. You really have to decide. If you have the money for it, and that's probably the biggest factor for most people, if you have the money for it, I would strongly suggest doing the plastic. 
Uh, it's a little more work, it's more money, but these things hold up a lot better. You can just dump them in a box, dump them on the table, shove them back in the box when you're done. Uh, painting is easier. Uh, I think the pluses for me, because I do this a lot, uh, plastic is a little bit more what I'd lean toward, but it's just expensive. You know, some of you might wonder, it's like, why don't you just do a Kickstarter? You know, just do a Kickstarter so I can just buy this thing. I don't have to make it. I have to say, I'm sorry, I, I can't do that because I just don't know how to do a Kickstarter. Uh, I have no experience with overseas companies. I have no connections with anybody in the game industry. I just have no ability to make something like that happen with the Kickstarter. So if some of you out there want to attempt a Kickstarter and you know, we could maybe work something out, but I just don't have the experience to do that. And the way things are right now, you know, with the industry, I, I just really don't know. Uh, I just don't know about that. The best I can do, you know, the, the best thing I can do is give you the ability to make this thing if you really want it. Maybe there's somebody that you know that's real crafty and you're not. Say, hey, uh, why don't you make this for me? And I'll give you 50 bucks to make it for me or, or something, you know. Uh, but anyway, that's really the best I can do is just make a way possible that if you want a copy of the game, there is a way to do it. Anyway, that's pretty much the, uh, uh, the comparison between the two. I, I hope this was informative in some way and good luck with the project.